Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for intermediate algebra. This is section 8.8, .8, which is the applications of exponential and logarithmic equations. So our first example is one that we've seen similar to uh, in previous uh, sections, is how long does it take to double money in an account earning 6% annual interest compounded semi-annually? If, if we recall the compounded interest equation, a equals p times the quantity 1 plus the rate over the number of compoundings to the number of compoundings times the number of years. So this is our compound interest equation. Hopefully, we committed that to memory. You may or may not be required to do so. So do so just for good measure. If we think about what this question asks, we read it. We know we're dealing with compounded interest. It asks, how long does it take to double money? So if I'm putting money into account, I just want to know how long it takes to double. Not necessarily how much I'm starting with, just how long it takes to double. So essentially, what we're told about this equation in our application is that this value is going to double what I want it doesn't matter how much I put as input. I want twice that value as output. So let's just choose an arbitrary amount. If this is 1, then this value would be 2, because this value would be double. I want to double my money. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say 2 equals 1 times this quantity. Well, 1 times this quantity isn't going to change it, so I'm just going to fill in my information. Rate, compounding, raised to the compounding times time. We were given that information. We know our rate is 6%. So I write it as a decimal over the number of compounding semi-annually. Hopefully, we recall that means twice a year. So my n is 2 raised to the 2 times t. Well, here, my variable is in the exponent. In order to solve an exponential equation, sometimes we had to introduce a logarithm. So what I'm going to do before I Try to solve this equation is just to simplify it the best I can. 0.06 divided by 2 is 0.03. 1 plus 0.03 is 1.03 to the 2t. So now that I've done that simplifying, now I can solve for this exponent. But I've got to get it out of the exponential position. I've got to remove this as a power. Well, I can do that by introducing a logarithm. I can undo exponents with logarithms. So I'm going to introduce the logarithm of my choice. I'm going to use the natural log. It, what I do to one side, I do to the other. So I'm going to take the natural log of the left side of my equation and the natural log of the right side of my equation. Now I can use some rules of exponents. I have the power rule of exponents. Well, that means a power times a power. Well, I can use that as the power rule of logarithms and bring that out front. Multiply by the power. Now I have that t out of the exponential exponential position. So now I can go ahead and solve for it. Isolate t. Well, what am I doing to t? I'm multiplying it by 2 and then multiplying it by ln of 1.03. Divide both sides by 2 and ln. And I'll actually show that step. What I do to one side, I need to do to the other. And this reduces to 1. And this reduces to 1. I have 1t. So t equals this value, ln of 2 over 2 ln of 1.03. This is something that I need to put into a calculator. What I recommend, use parentheses. So <clears throat> I know my calculator, when I hit the ln button, it gives me that initial parentheses. So I'm going to close that parentheses. Then I'm going to divide and introduce a parentheses, hit my 2 key, hit the ln which introduces a parenthesis. I close my parenthesis, and then I close another parenthesis. So we have two sets of parentheses in the denominator. That's what it, for my calculator. It's really on your shoulders to be familiar with your own calculator. So when I do this and plug this into my calculator, I get 11.7 years. And we'll just go 
to uh, one decimal place, 11.7 years. So if I want to double my money, I can put it into an account at 6% compounded semi-annually. And I will double it in 11.7 years, regardless of how much principal I actually start with. If I put in 10,000 in 11.7 years, I'll have 20,000 if I have 6% compounded semi-annually. Let's look at another example of where we might experience exponential or logarithmic uh, equations. One example is the Richter scale. It's used to measure the intensity of earthquakes. So if r equals the log of the intensity, first thing I want to identify is what is the base? It doesn't indicate the base. So I say, oh, that's a common log. It's a base 10. 10 to what power would give me i, the intensity of an earthquake. So how many times more intense is an earthquake of magnitude 7.8 than a 6.8? Well, let's think about what this is saying and how it relates to the magnitude of an earthquake scale, r, the Richter scale, magnitude equals log of i. Well, 7.8 and 6.8 are the two different magnitudes that I'm given in this example. So what, how do we find this value? Well, this value is the log of the intensity. And we want to know how many times more intense is this than this. That's what it asks. How many times more intense is an earthquake of 7.8 than that of 6.8? So I want to know how many times more intense is this value relative to this value. So that's essentially what this is asking. So I was able to translate it into these statements. 6.8 is some uh, log of the intensity. x times this value, how many times more, is 7.8. So now I can actually do essentially a substitution. We did learn about systems of equation. If this value is the same as that value, I can just substitute it. So 7.8 is how many times that of 6.8. That would be an easier way, but I wanted to relate it to the Richter scale. So now that we have this, we can essentially solve for x, divide both sides. 7.8 divided by 6.8 is x. And if you do this division, you get approximately, and I am going to round to two significant figures, just one decimal, because my other numbers were one decimal, 1.1. Now, does this answer the question? If we reread it, it says, how many times more intense is an earthquake of magnitude 7.8 than a 6.8? We have to relate it to this equation. We have to recall, what was the base? Because logarithms tell us what the exponent is. What we found here was the exponent, not the multiple of how intense this value is. Our base is base 10. So, 10 to the 1.1 is how many times more intense this 7.8 is compared to a 6.8. 10 to the 1.1, that's a value we could put in our calculator. And we're going to have to round it at some point. It's 12 point, And I already put it in the calculator to get 12.59 or let's say 12.6 to one decimal. So an uh, earthquake of magnitude 7.8 is 12.6 times more powerful of an earthquake than a 6.8. So we have to understand how that Richter scale works in order to really see the magnitude or the intensity of an earthquake. So an earthquake of you know, magnitude 8 is actually 100 times stronger than that of a magnitude 6. Very uh, large energies being released in earthquakes. All right, let's look at this one. Maybe we're looking at something in terms of biology. Uh, we have a swarm of bees grows according to the formula p equals p naught e to the 0.35t, where p naught, or p initial, is the initial population of bees, how many bees we're starting with. And t is the number of days. If we want to know, if we start with 1,000 bees, how many more bees will there be in six days? Well, we essentially just have to evaluate this equation. We want to know 
if we have 1,000 bees, that's what we're starting with, our initial population. E, because these bees uh, reproduce exponentially, of E to the 0 0.35. And T represents the number of days, which is 6. We can multiply that by 6. Well, what's nice about this equation is our variables already isolated. We want to know how many bees there are going to be after six days if we start with 1,000. This is something we can plug into a calculator. And we're going to have to estimate. But when it comes to application problems like this, we're not going to have a part of a bee. We're either going to have a full bee or not. So we're going to round it to the nearest whole number. And when I put this value into the calculator, 1,000e raised to the 0.35 times 6, I got 8,166 point some value. But I'm going to round it to the nearest uh, whole number. This will be the number of bees six days from now if I start with 1,000. So for this example, we just had to evaluate the expression. All right, we're going to look at one more example here. It says uh, the half-life is defined as the time for half of a substance to remain. How much time does it take if a substance is decaying so that I have half of it left? So we're told a substance decays according to the equation A equals A naught e to the negative 0.04t. And one thing uh, we'll notice when we're doing the homework and we're practicing, a negative exponent in these examples means decay. And a positive exponent means exponential growth. Hopefully, we recall that when we talked about functions of uh, exponential nature. So if a substance decays according to that formula, what does it mean? Well, a naught is the initial amount of substance, how much we're starting with. And t is the number of hours. So this decays so much every hour. We're asked to find the half-life of the substance. Now, we're not given any numbers. We're just asked to find the half-life. Well, this is very similar to the very first example where we were asked, how long does it take to double our money? Well, essentially, we're saying, how long does it take for half of the substance to remain? So if I look at this equation, a equals a naught e to the negative 0.04t, if I start with a certain amount, its value is going to be half. That's what I'm asked to find, find the half-life that time that it takes so that half of it remains. So let's say I start with one quantity. This would be 1 half. 1 half equals 1 times this value. Well, 1 times that value is just the value. Now I can solve this. Now to solve this, it's actually easier because we don't have to introduce the logarithm of our choice, it's already chosen for us. The base, the value being raised to some power, is e. Well, I know that ln is log base e. So ln of both sides is what I want to use because I already have the base of e. So if I introduce this logarithm, ln of e reduces to 1. So I have one of these arguments or of these powers, negative 0.04t is equal to ln of 1 half. And I'll change it to 0.5, because this is a value we'd want to put in our calculator. And now to solve for t, I essentially just have to divide by this negative 0.04. So t equals ln of 0.5 divided by, and I'll just move that negative up top, a negative 0.04. So we have negative ln of 0.5 over 0.04. 0.04. Plug that into your calculator. See what you get. And hopefully, if you're doing it right and you're using parentheses and closing them as necessary and not forgetting about your sign, you should get 17.33 hours. And because it is an application problem, you want to make sure that you're using the proper unit. So 17.33 hours. So now, maybe if there was a further question and I had to identify what the substance was, I could do that by knowing its half-life. So this has been section 8.8, .8, Applications. Thank you for watching.